Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great Thirsty Thursday. That means, I don't know if you know what that means, tomorrow is finally freaking Friday, and the weekend is here. And what you have to understand is, unfortunately for you ladies out there, a lot of you are going to be missing your husbands because next week the Dallas Cowboys go to training camp. The NFL season is upon us. We are literally 49 days away. And of course, I'm sorry. I'm suggesting that men will be watching more so. Oh, some women do because we have a lot. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to do my video here. Um, I'm trying to suggest that there are some wives who do not like football and they would rather have their husband on Sundays and actually some Saturdays and some Thursdays. Uh, now some Fridays because the Eagles are playing on Friday night in uh, Brazil where they can't wear green. I don't know how that's going to work with the Green Bay Packers and the Eagles that can't wear green. And there's even games on Monday, uh, excuse, of course Monday, as well as Christmas on Wednesday. So that leaves what day of the week that we don't have football? Tuesday? Well, you know, there could always be a bad snowstorm or a hurricane that could put a game on Tuesday. Then we'd literally have seven days, uh, possibly a football game. So for some ladies out there, they are football season widows. Okay. She's always correcting me and shit. Oh, Lordy. I'm also presuming. Okay. All righty, so the Dallas Cowboys, if you are listening to the talking heads and everything else, or listening to Charles Haley, Charles Haley has said that the Cowboys are screwed, or Jerry Jones is screwed, because of the way they've done their contracts. Now, the funny thing is, the funny thing is this, I have gone on and talked about in nauseam that you can actually get the players signed, even though the price tag has gone up. Mike Fisher this morning, he talked about, of course, how you can do Dak Prescott's contract um, and get it done. And same way I've been talking about it, because I've literally talked about Trevor Lawrence's contract. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, Trevor Lawrence is on his fifth year option. So you can throw out that first year that's at like seven point some million dollar cap hit. But his next year is like 15 and so on. So you could look at this and say the Cowboys do have to deal with the 55 million hit for this year, but they could do his deal and lower that deal to about 40 or even 30, depending on what they do with the four voidable years that they have. Or they could end up just saying, we're going to eat this 55 this year and we're going to end up having more cap space down the road for next year. You follow what I'm saying? You make this year the, the eat the big money year, and then you basically are starting the contract over except for the $40 million. And you could literally have his contract number at about twenty five next year. So you can do this. Um, when you think about Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, because this is where we can say apples are apples here <clears throat> together. Justin Jefferson, his cap number, because it was a fifth-year option, would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of 17. He was drafted after C.D. Lamb, so C.D.'s is actually a little bit higher. He signs a $35 million contract. The first year is only seven, seven and some jump change. The following year is $15 million. It does jump up to like 33 in the third year, but see, here's the thing. You could look at this and say, I'm paying almost $18 million for CD Lamb for this year. If I do that contract, I am saving about $9 million right now. Right now. 
And if I use that same contract, 15 million next year, whoa, 15 million. And I have a 9 million in my hand that I can use magically like right now to get another player or two or three or four or, or actually nine the way Cowboys sign veterans. Or I can carry that over and apply it to those contracts. We're looking at $65 million, so granted, 15 of that would be his, but we also would have that nine to carry over. So we would still have money to have Dak, to have Micah, and so on. The, don't fall for this fallacy that you can't sign all three and, and things. It, you, it's, it's bullshit, okay? Don't fall for it. And, um, you know, I know you don't want to listen to me because I am not one of the talking heads that are from the star, you know, with the Cowboys and so on and things. So I bring up that Mike Fisher is saying the same thing we've been saying all off season. You can get these things done and create cap room and possibly bring in other players if you want to. But Charles Haley did go on and say, basically, Cowboys backloaded contracts. And the reason they backloaded contracts is because they screwed up with contracts before. And so they kind of had to keep borrowing money to make up for shit that happened a long time ago for Tony Romo because he ended up leaving early for guys like Miles Austin, Marion Barber, Jay Ratcliffe, um, you know, T.O. And you can go on down the line of contracts that they ended up eating. Jalen Smith. Michael Gallup, okay? You know, they kept bringing in guys that ended up not being there. Lyle Collins, we ate like $13 million on him. And so to make up for that, they had to, the guys that are good and that are here, restructure and kick the money down the road. Well, eventually, when you get that payday loan, eventually you got a lump sum and you got to pay it off or you lose your car. This is interesting here is ESPN talking about, of course, Charles Haley, Kimberly Martin and crew, and saying that the Cowboys are screwed. The Cowboys claim to be all in this season, but they still haven't made commitments to their biggest stars. Dak yep. Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Micah Parsons are all looking for a pay raise this year, but it remains unclear if any of these deals will get done. On the Up and Adam show, Cowboys Hall of Famer Charles Haley shared what he thinks the team should do with Dak specifically. Take a listen. He kept backloading everything. So now he's screwed. So now he, you know, his, check, you know, his bill came due. And he doesn't have the money to be able to do that. And so what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to find another way around um, the salary cap or push a lot of the older guys' salary cap way back. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know whether these guys going to play one year or two years and then all of it come due again. So, hey, he, play, he gambled a long time, and now um, time is up. Mm-hmm. Kmart is back to join Harry Douglas and myself. I'm gonna start with you. Do you agree with Haley's comments? I do agree. Uh, to me, when I think about the Cowboys, the person to blame is Jerry Jones. Because is Jerry. let's think about it. Who constructs the roster and sets the culture? Jerry. Who's talking every week after games? The owner. Jerry. Jerry. If you are a Dallas Cowboys fan or a fan of football and you don't think Dak is any good, who paid him? Jerry. Jerry. And if you are a Cowboys fan and you're annoyed that this whole offseason you've been waiting for big moves, you've been waiting for free agents, you've been waiting for some, one of these top guys to get paid and that hasn't happened yet, Jerry. who's responsible for that? Jerry. Listen, I understand Dak's playoff record. What is it? Like two and, two four. and five, something like that? Like, two I, and four. I'm not absolving him for, for, for you five. know, from any blame whatsoever. But when I look at the two Cowboys, do you believe, Harry, that the Cowboys are all in? Because that's what Jerry said. No. Nope. Do you? What did the man say? Hell no. Who's fault? Who's who told you they're all in? And hasn't really shown that they're all in, Jerry. So uh, it starts at the top. A lot of when I look around the league, and I've covered a lot of teams. When you look around the league, and you look at organizations that you constantly wonder why are they. Why are they not meeting expectation? Why are they falling short of what the roster on paper can do? It starts at the top, and to me, that is Jerry Jones. 
Well, number one, shout out to Charles Haley, one of the greatest Dallas Cowboys Hello. of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, that interview that he just did, that was at in Detroit at Calvin Johnson Jr.'s golf mm -hmm. uh, charity event in which you had Randy Moss, you had Jalen Rolls, you had Justin Reed, you had Ricky Williams, Braylon Edwards, all of us was there supporting Calvin Johnson. So I just wanted to give him some love uh, because I don't think he gets enough love off the field for what he's doing in Detroit, but also in the Atlanta area. Uh, what Charles Haley is saying is correct when it comes to, from the financial standpoint, and why the Cowboys are in this situation right now, uh -huh. uh, not paying their guys. And the guys we're talking about, Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and also yeah. Michael Parsons. Uh -huh. Now, when it comes to the playoffs... Playoffs? Playoffs? I'm Don't talk about playoffs. The, side of things. the reason why they weren't able to have success the last three seasons, you just look at last year alone versus the Green Bay Packers. Before you can blink an eye, they're down 27 to nothing. And it wasn't just Dak Prescott, it wasn't just that offense of C.D. Lamb, but it was also that defense that was atrocious as well and couldn't stop a nosebleed, but also couldn't stop the run game. And Jordan Love looked like he was a top five quarterback versus the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I will go to the 2022 season when they played against the San Francisco 49ers when Brock Purdy was the quarterback. I think also the players had an opportunity to be their best, and they weren't. I always bring up this play that Dak Prescott had backed up in his own end zone with C.D. Lamb won one on one on a go route to the left side of the sidelines, and Dak Prescott underthrew it. Well, if he throws that ball in front of him, he walks in. It's a walk-in touchdown, and now the pressure is on Brock Purdy and Sam Fran to come from behind versus it being the other way around. Mm -hmm. And then also, 2021, Jimmy Garoppolo, mm -hmm. the defense couldn't stop a nosebleed, couldn't they stop couldn't. the run game, I should say, of the San Francisco 49ers. They got out physical. But also, Dak Prescott not understanding situational football, the, the lack of awareness from him on the football field, trying to get an extra play in, trying to spike it when you just got to, you know, do something differently mm -hmm. in that situation, should know all the rules and regulations of what you can and cannot do. So I'm going to put this thing more so on the players because at the end of the day, they're the one on the football fields that have to make things happen. Okay. No matter what Jerry Jones does, at the end of the day, that we've seen this team go 12-5, 12-5, 12-5. This team was in prime positions playoff-wise. Mm -hmm. The players on the football field at the end of the day did not get it done for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So when was the last time the Cowboys made a Super Bowl? Oh, I what was, year was that? I was just a young boy. It was so a was long Dak Prescott time. the quarterback then? In the 90s. I was a okay, young boy. Okay, so, so Dak wasn't the quarterback then? No. no. Okay, so the, we've talked about the Cowboys not reaching that point mm -hmm. for your entire existence, basically, right? Okay. Yep. Who hired Mike McCarthy? If you're not a Mike McCarthy believer, who hired him after a little sleepover fun? Jerry Jones, right? If you are thinking, you know what, Cowboys, why did they get rid of Amari Cooper for a bag of Skittles? Who, who makes the personnel moves, right? Mm. When I look at this team, I just see years and years of the Cowboys make the most money. This is the most expensive franchise we got. This is America's team. And every year we talk about them, it's not just one quarterback. We are looking at decades now of when are the Cowboys going to get back to what we're used to the Cowboys being. It's not happening. What? So who's in charge? Who's running the show here? But, but, who's but, who's but, spending but the money? But here's my thing. Who's getting and, the head coach? And, and who's I getting think the court? Like, a, a Cowboys great Michael Irvin sa has said this on numerous of occasions. When it comes to big time games and it comes to playoff football for the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. the stars have to play like stars. They do. That has not. The stars have to play like stars. And they have not, for whatever reason, if it's the culture, if it's nerves, if it's the coaching, we don't know what it is. And it may be because this monkey has been on the Dallas Cowboys back that you just don't handle the pressure. I don't know what it is, but I feel like once they break through, once they get that taste, once they learn how to win, they'll be unstoppable. But until they do... We're screwed like Jerry Jones. All right, good people. Hope you all are having a great evening. I will see you guys in a bit. Peace out.